So, is it time to quit Adobe Premiere? No! <laughs> if you're thinking about it, but maybe aren't sure uh, what to replace it with or, or why, or even if it's worth it, then hopefully my experience will help you answer those questions. So, I've been one of the most devoted users, I think, of Adobe Premiere uh, all the way back to 1994. Uh, actually, yeah, just when I started learning. And, and then, of course, as I started to work professionally, uh, I uh, I had my sort of share of experience using other programs, such as, for example, Avid Media Composer, because uh, if you're working in films, then you know that Avid uh, was, and still kind of is, uh, the, the leader. Uh, but throughout that whole time, I kept on using uh, Premiere uh, as sort of my main uh, editing software uh, when I did my own personal projects. Then in 2003, when they came out with Adobe Premiere Pro, uh, I really embraced it uh, for both personal videos, but also for paid projects. Now, fast forward to today, which is November 2018, uh, and I have been uh, actually Adobe Premiere free for the last five months. In fact, pretty much all of my videos on this uh, channel and all of my films and music videos that I've worked on uh, since June uh, of this year have actually been edited in DaVinci Resolve. Now, does that mean that you also have to use Resolve? No, I have, of course there's other options out there the, and I'm gonna kind of talk about uh, them and also why I went with Resolve. Uh, so first let, let me kind of uh, start with the why. So why did I abandon Adobe Premiere? Uh, there was actually various reasons but i would say the main one is really their subscription model you know service thing uh, the adobe software is actually great and it has a lot of uh, unique features that other programs don't have uh, but i did find that their constant uh, upgrades were really annoying and especially uh, when they would release let's say a new you know up upgrade all hyped up and everything and then i install it and it turns out it had a lot of bugs in it uh, now some of you i know are probably going to say why the hell would you upgrade, you know, right away, uh, let's say, to a, to a new version? Uh, well, you know, that's easy for you maybe to say when you're just working by yourself, but when you're working on a bigger project with various people uh, editing, let's say, the same project, then uh, all it takes is for one person to upgrade and then kind of everybody else is forced to upgrade, uh, you know, and have the same, you know, or, you know more up-to-date kind of version of, of the program uh, so that we can all open and share the same project files. Now, the biggest reason why I quit Premiere has more to do with their subscription model, which, uh, you know, if you've noticed, first of all, it's getting more and more expensive, uh, but also it, it pretty much means that you're never really done paying for the software. It's, in, in, in reality, I would say it's kind of like you're renting it from them on a monthly basis. Now, when it comes to, for example, uh, video cameras, uh, I always tell other filmmakers that uh, you, you should be very careful when you're investing in camera gear because uh, if let's say you're only shooting a project ever so on uh, then it makes sense probably for you to just rent out the, you know the camera for each project and this way you'll ensure that you always have the latest camera and you don't have to worry about the camera breaking down on you and all that stuff uh, but if you're let's say shooting all the time uh, it really at the end of the day it makes more sense for you to just straight out buy the camera so that this way you have it uh, always available to you even at short notice and in the long term that will actually end up costing you less well with Adobe Premiere it's kind of like you're always renting um, so when it comes to for example my professional work that I do or even these free YouTube videos that I do up here uh, I, I'm, I'm constantly editing and I always need to have access to these video editing tools and it just basically was happening too often that I had a problem because of the Adobe subscription model. Uh, basically, uh, you know, you're paying a monthly fee uh, and then whenever you start up the program, you actually need to have access to the internet uh, or at least every so on, uh, so that the software can verify that you did in fact pay for the current month. Now, at the beginning of this year, this was actually a huge problem for me since uh, I was editing a bunch of different projects while traveling through Ecuador. Uh, and uh, on a few occasions, I just simply didn't have access to the internet. Uh, and basically, uh, you know, I wasted days since I could not actually use the software, even though I did pay for it. And that is just, you know, not a sort of reliable piece of tool uh, for me, I would say, for serious work. Uh, now, there is actually a, kind of a, a, I would say, a lie, you know, or partial lie going around uh, because of, uh, well, different people mentioning it, but mainly because of, you know, uh, the, uh, the marketing done by Adobe Premiere. And that is that, that Adobe Premiere is the number one video editing program in the industry. And yes, uh, their program is, I would say, the most popular overall. Uh, but that's because, you know, kind of, you know, when you count in everybody, including, you know, all the way from like professionals to like, you know, your grandma editing cut videos. Uh, you know, if you really, if you're looking at, at sort of just at the professionals in Hollywood, Bollywood, or, let's say European film industry, 
uh, then the number one editing program being used right now, whether it's on feature films or TV shows, is actually still Avid Media Composer. So what program should you switch to if you're tired of Adobe? Well, I would say, you know, just do what I did, switch to uh, DaVinci Resolve. And no, don't worry, I'm not getting paid. Uh, I wish I was, uh, but I'm not getting paid uh, by them to say this. So why do I think the Resolve is the best option right now when there's uh, obviously other choices? Well, first, let me sort of break down uh, all the available options. Um, the first one I would say is the Avid Media Composer which is a fully capable film editing program, but it's uh, also not the easiest to learn to use. And that's important actually because it's been around the longest time. Uh, and it has been, I would say, specifically built and, and you know, made to fit the world and the lingo of old school uh, editors, uh, you know, back in the day in Hollywood, who actually used to edit on film. So some of the terminology for sure might be a little bit confusing to a beginner. Uh, but also, you know, on top of that, it has really actually powerful networking capabilities that uh, you're definitely going to need to learn to set up at least or, or to at least to understand uh, the basics of uh, if you want to kind of start using that program. Since these days, many new video editors uh, just really want to be able to jump in and start editing. Uh, and also because a lot of the projects these days uh, are uh, much simpler, I would say, where they don't require all of that networking capability. It means that most of the new editors just really don't want to spend the time, uh, first of all, learning something, uh, you know, that really that they're not going to be using, uh, when, especially when most of the time they just want to edit a simple YouTube video, for example, on their laptop. This is in part why Avid has slowly been sort of losing the share of the market over the years. Now, Premiere, like I said, it does everything right in terms of the ease of use and also you know having the advanced functionality uh, but the main problem is that them <laughs> subscription model and then the constant need to basically to have internet access in order to use the programs so what about final cut pro x well uh, it's also a great editing tool but really the biggest problem with it is that it's only on max so uh, if you're not an apple user like myself and, and many others out there uh, in the industry then it's right away basically makes it obsolete now even if you do love apple products and let's say you have all the macs that you can afford uh, chances are that you're still going to need to learn to to use another video editing program uh, that works on windows because uh, again chances are that you'll be working on a project you know sometime throughout your career with another uh, filmmaker or collaborator uh, that also happens to be using Windows. Now, all the other programs like Avid, Premiere, uh, and Resolve do actually work on both Windows and Mac. Uh, so that actually brings me to Blackmagic DaVinci Resolve. Uh, first of all, it works on the multiple platforms. It doesn't have any subscription. Uh, you pay once and you get to use the program for life. Not only that, but you actually get free lifetime upgrades and it's cheaper than uh, all the other options. In fact, it's actually free. Uh, seriously, no lies. If you want to download and start using DaVinci Resolve, then uh, just go to the website right now uh, and download it. Uh, the free version has pretty much most of the functionality of the full paid version. One of the biggest things I noticed in the free version is that because they're using the freely available H.264 decoder, uh, it means that when editing certain of those video files from the consumer cameras, uh, that use that codec, uh, that it's going to be a little bit more choppy during playback. Now, if you're editing any RAW files or Apple ProRes, then it's really not a problem. And even on an average system, you'll be able to edit smoothly. Now, in the paid version of DaVinci Resolve Studio, which, by the way, is only $300, uh, you don't have any of those problems. Also, if you buy any of the Blackmagic design cameras, uh, then you're going to get a copy of the full uh, DaVinci Resolve Studio. Uh, in fact, uh, my new favorite uh, camera right now, which is the Packet Cinema 4K camera, uh, which is only $1,300, uh, also includes a, a copy of Resolve. By the way, Resolve, in case you didn't know, is probably one of the best color grading uh, applications out there. Most of the big Hollywood films and TV shows have actually been graded in Resolve, uh, and it's uh, it's been one of the reasons, personally, why I started re using Resolve years ago, which was exclusively for color grading. Uh, now, except, like I said, before I, I would edit in Premiere, then I had to then transfer my whole project into Resolve. Well, now Resolve is also an amazing video editor. So I can actually edit the whole project right away in Resolve. Uh, and then right away I can, uh, again, color grade it. And I can even do visual effects uh, if I need to. Uh, and that's because uh, the current version of Resolve uh, contains Fusion, which is sort of like Adobe After Effects, but it's, it's node-based instead of layer-based. 
Another thing that Resolve has is actually a really powerful audio editing and mixing suite called Fairlight. So again, uh, before, you know, when I was editing in Premiere, uh, and let's say if I wanted to do effects, then I had to export uh, the, the shots that I wanted to, to work on to Adobe After Effects. And then, for example, to do my final sound mix, I would have to export the project to Adobe Audition uh, or Pro Tools, for example. And then at the end, I would have to import all of that back to Premiere uh, for my final output. Well, now in DaVinci Resolve, I don't have to do any of that because really it just what it means is that I can edit. Uh, also, I can do visual effects. I can do sound mixing, proper color grading, everything in one application. And even let's say the whole project is, is officially done already, but uh, maybe I or, or my client like last minute wants to make some changes to it. Uh, then again, I don't have to worry about, let's say, having to redo the, the effects or color grading or whatever like that without destroying the timing of the whole edit. Because again, everything is in one application uh, where I can, you know, like I said, quickly go in, adjust, let's say the audio mix, adjust my, you know, VFX or, or my color grading and that automatically updates my final edit. And I don't have to ever really import or export anything between different applications. So honestly, with Resolve right now, uh, I don't miss Adobe Premiere uh, or even the whole Adobe Creative Suite. Uh, really, the only thing you might be asking yourself is, what about uh, Adobe Photoshop, for example, if you're using that application a lot? Uh, well, you can just use a substitute like I do, which is GIMP. Uh, it's actually a free program. It's been around actually for a long time and it's also available for all the different operating systems. So if you want to free yourself from Adobe like I did, then now you know how to do it. Uh, also, if anybody out there working for Adobe happens to be watching this video, uh, is actually listening, then I would want to tell you guys to honestly, please, please reconsider the whole uh, subscription model uh, that you have right now in place. Or maybe let's say alongside your subscription model, you know, please offer a full paid version, so let's say of the programs that people can just buy out uh, so that they don't require sort of having this constant internet connection uh, to be able to use your programs. Because otherwise, I, I think you're going to lose a lot of people from the industry, uh, even though you guys have actually uh, some really amazing pieces of software there. All right, now let me answer some of your comments from the previous videos. So first comment is from Marco Sansalon. Uh, that's on my Mozoa Air 2 gimbal versus DJI Ronin S. Uh, comparison that I did and it's actually two questions. First question is what about the follow focus? Is there any way to manage it? I use a GH5. Uh, yes, actually the follow focus that comes with the Moza 2 uh, just like the one that comes with the uh, Zion Crane uh, 2. The, those are both basically follow focus that come with the gimbal so you can directly control it using the, the knob there on the gimbal. But the follow focus actually comes with the Moza Air 2 gimbal uh, it can also be controlled using their mobile app. Question number two, what do you think between Moza Air 2 and the Zion 2? Uh, they're both actually very similar gimbals. You know, they both can take a lot of weight, even though the Moza 2 actually uh, can take the most weight, even more than the G DJ Ronin uh, S. Uh, also, the Moza Air just has some, some more functionality. Like, for example, it has the uh, Inception mode, where you can keep on, you know, rotating the camera. Uh, so it has that. Uh, also, I find it a little, little quicker and easier to use in terms of, let's say, if you want to, uh, let's say, you know, auto-tune it to kind of balance the camera perfectly, or if you just want to adjust the settings of the sensitivity and things like that. Now, you know, like I said, both gimbals are going to give you smooth shots. It, it just when it comes to right now, sort of the more up-to-date gimbal would be the Moza Air 2. Next question is from Utechnotube, and it's, uh, kip, kip, let me try this, kip to go hen, uh, <laughs> Uh, or at least that's what I remember from my Russian lessons uh, back in the day in Poland. Uh, yeah, it's, it's been a long time. So uh, let me maybe use Google Translate and then I'll, I'll just write back to you the answer. Another question I got here is from Anatol Branch. That's on the Artist Tool, uh, which is the HPZ book uh, review that I did of the, the new sort of laptop that I'm using. Uh, anyways, the comment is, hey Tom, thanks for the great review. I've been looking at this laptop and I've been confused by the 4K Dreamcaller UWVA screen versus the apparent non-Dreamcaller 4K screen. Do you know if your screen from b &H sale is a Dreamcaller and if it's 10-bit? Uh, no, the one that I have, I have the slightly cheaper version. It actually is not the Dreamcaller and it's not the 10-bit version. But the, yeah, Dreamcaller is the 10-bit one. The last time I checked on b &H, they did actually have a sale. Maybe it wasn't as big, but they did have a sale on the one with the 10-bit 10, 10 display. Next one is from Robinson Lambe. Without being biased and not following the bandwagon of big names, I must say the Moza is 
much better than the Ronin. Um, I don't know if it's much better. It has a higher, you know, weight limit that it can take. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's, in my test, literally all of these gimbals these days, you know, including the Ronin and the Moza, can produce smooth shots. It really just comes down to your preference. Test them all out and try them. But, uh, yeah, and, and I don't know if there's, like, a, such a big advantage between one, one or the other. The Killer Tapes, cool name. Uh, I just left a comment on my widescreen bars free download video. Uh, super helpful, thank you. You're welcome. Whenever I can, I try to help you guys. Sean Lafram Boys is uh, asking what size softbox is that? And this is on my cinematic or how to shoot cinematic interviews in two minutes video. Uh, the the softbox that I actually used was the one that's uh, like the, the mid size was I believe 23 inches. Uh, so check on their website. On my Moza Air 2 versus DJ Ronin gimbal uh, review comparison video that I did, uh, we got another comment. David Moreno Belmont. Uh, is this the production model or not yet? It's actually, yeah, the one, I thought it was the final production model, but I just got an actually notification from uh, Gutsen, the manufacturers. They said that uh, they have actually made slight improvements in the final version of the gimbal. So I'm hoping to get that soon so I can do a proper review of the gimbal for you guys. Uh, all right, so that's it for this video. Uh, as always, if you guys liked it, make sure you click that like button. If you didn't like it, then double click that dislike button. <laughs> and uh, well, you know, if you want to stay up to date with all the new videos and posts and things that I'm doing, uh, best way is to subscribe to my newsletter. And if you do, you'll actually get a little gift from me. Just follow the link in the description of the video if you want to subscribe to my newsletter. And also visit my website where I always put out new things, uh, which is at tomantosfilms.com. Anyways, that's it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.